Good evening, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge I'm speaking to you from the traditional and unsurrendered land of the Coast Salish, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish peoples, and that Hub Cycling operates within the territories of 44 First Nation communities. All the cycling improvements that we advocate and program for take place on lands that have been used by them for time immemorial to live, transport, and gather. And I want to recognize their history of nurturing and stewarding this beautiful place. Hub Cycling is active around Metro Vancouver and has expanded our bike education reach to many communities across the province. I commit to honoring this land through my work to get more people cycling more often, protecting our air and land, and supporting our collective health and connecting our communities and the natural world. Cycling is a powerful choice to improve transportation's physical and social impacts on our world. I'm lucky to live beside the Keatsy First Nation community in what's colonially known as Pitt Meadows along the beautiful Fraser River. And I was lucky enough to be invited to join them on one of their final rides last year with their youth group when they completed their community asset mapping and cycling skills courses uh, that were organized by Hub Cycling and Red Fox Community Living Society. It was pretty neat to see the kids' confidence and watch them ride away with bikes, helmets, and locks so that they could keep using active transportation and gain the independence, freedom, and joy of getting around on their own steam. It's wonderful to see so many of you at our 10th Annual Bike Awards to showcase some of the exciting and impressive progress being made to get more people cycling more often. Not only is it the 10th year of celebrating cycling together, it's Hub Cycling's 25th anniversary of advocating for better cycling conditions across the region and the province. I see many of you here that help create and shape Hub Cycling and the Vancouver Area Cycling Coalition, as it was formerly known. You were along for the ride as our name changed, our office changed a few times, and we grew from a handful of contractors and dedicated volunteers to over 50 employees and hundreds of valued volunteers. I have memories from our shoebox of an office on 5th and Scotia back in 2009, and then the beautiful teamwork used to haul an office worth of stuff by bike to the next office and the next one. Hub Cycling and each of you have been a part of a lot of positive change in the last 25 years, as well as the last 10 while this awards event has been happening. The Bike Awards allows us to recognize and acknowledge the local and other levels of government for their work on making biking better. It includes a bit of coaxing, cajoling, and complimenting, and getting everyone on the same team. After all, we all want better cycling conditions. It helps solve so many of our shared challenges. Some municipalities used to really struggle to get momentum to improve cycling. So our biggest leap award sometimes meant a lot in a place where cycling needed some positive reinforcement. If we compare what was happening at the time of the first awards in 2013, that was not too far after bike lanes were a top controversy in our region and media interviews involved name calling and fiery commentary. It wasn't easy to get decision makers to put their name behind biking then. Fast forward to 2013 and today we have 14 elected officials from various levels of government, including five provincial government ministers. They're proud to support cycling as an important way to help tackle challenges of climate, affordability, equity, health and mobility. I'm so proud of the hub team that has been making such an influence in making this transformation happen. To the volunteers, board, and staff of Hub and the ACC, cheers to 25 years. We're not about to lose momentum now. Many of our multi-year advocacy campaigns have started moving faster than ever. We're being actively engaged in BC Motor Vehicle Act reform to better protect vulnerable road users. We're a key stakeholder with ICBC to improve their coverage of people cycling. And we're in frequent communication with local, regional, and provincial governments to fully ungap the map and connect our cycling networks, including long distance connections via cycle highways. We've made big progress on our goal to have every child in BC receive cycling education in school. We're at nearly 50% in our Everyone Rides Grade 4 or 5 program and continuing to grow.
We know that making the choice to cycle is not just about infrastructure nor education, but also having somewhere safe to store your bike at the end of a trip. Our bike-friendly building consultations are also growing rapidly, and we released our cycling and older buildings research report to highlight areas for improvement there as well. There are so many people that have shaped Metro Vancouver cycling history to get us where we are today. I'm excited to have Colin Stein as our keynote speaker tonight, as his book, Van Bikes, documents the early players on the local cycling scene. Those folks who set the stage for transformational change from cycling seen as a leisure pastime to a transportation option, and one that deserves safe and comfortable spaces and promotion. Hi, my name is Colin Stein. I'm a former hub staff, an advocate for cycling, and last year I published a book uh, about advocacy in the region called Van Bikes. I'm very pleased to be able to make some remarks about the 10th annual uh, Bike Awards. Um, I'm currently actually in a different part of BC, uh, so I'm not in the Lower Mainland. And it brought to mind leaving um, Metro Vancouver, about how sometimes you have to leave the region to be able to look back and see what's actually been accomplished um, over the last decade for cycling, walking, and rolling. And I think uh, it's been an amazing decade of growth for the awards themselves, and they really serve to illustrate, I think, in at least two ways, the amount of growth that we've achieved. Uh, the first is obvious, of course, whether it's the 10th, 11th, 20th, or 25th uh, year, each new year of the Bike Awards is further evidence of those accomplishments, of a stitching together of ideas, investments, and the contributions of people to create a network and the possibility of a bikeable region. And it's true that the exact year may not actually matter. This is a mounting body of evidence, and in many cases, physical proof of this growth. Um, but beyond bike lanes and slow streets and the various events that we get to enjoy, we also see support manifesting in community after community. And I believe it's that community support, in fact, that's so important to the success of what we celebrate with the Bike Awards, because the results of that support actually is also evident in that year-over-year -year growth in not just the accomplishments, but the awards um, that are given out at the Bike Awards each year. So from just four awards in 2012 to, I believe, almost two dozen today, uh, I can tell you this, nonprofits don't grow and their programs certainly don't grow without demand. So transportation demand equals awards demand. And here we are. And we can all chart that progress in the physical ways, of, of course, as well. So when the awards started, Vancouver's Hornby and Dunsmere bike lanes were just underway. The Richmond Railway Greenway had just opened. Uh, the Iron Workers Memorial Bridge was still single file only sidewalks. Uh, we didn't yet have a bike path in the Portman Bridge, there was no Arbutus Greenway, and there was no Moby bike share. I joined Hub uh, around that time as staff member number six or seven uh, in a tiny office working with others to try to get our education programs uh, underway and growing and trying to get a new bike to work week trip tracker built. We were, I believe, eight volunteer local committees at that point, and they didn't have much reach or influence because, to be honest, there wasn't too much to work with. But we did have, in Vancouver anyways, an aligned, committed uh, mayor and council working closely with staff and groups like Hub on making strong commitments and investments in infrastructure and programs to take the city to the next level. And they did. So we did a lot of celebrating every year around this time. And here we are once again, which brings me to the second legacy, I believe, of the last decade or 25 years, in fact, uh, and but specifically of the Bike Awards, which I considered um, these accomplishments as I was leaving the region and we were thinking about, I was thinking about celebrating the Bike Awards uh, and that second legacy is the leadership in Vancouver, which I believe influenced the growth in other places like Richmond and Surrey and the city of North Van, New West and Pitt Meadows uh, in those early years. And then this rising tide of support over time also started to lift up support for cycling in places like Tawasson First Nation, Delta, Maple Ridge, and Langley, and so on and so forth. So these are the kinds of bike-friendly places I believe we'll be celebrating tonight. And that's, I think, perhaps the greatest legacy potential of these awards, that they can be used as templates and as models of what other cities, towns, and rural communities, the islands, such as where I am right now currently, um, the interior, the Sunshine Coast, and so on and so forth, what other places can do to work towards. So Vancouver set the template and hardworking people, political leaders, planners, engineers, and of course, advocates in all realms of life, such as those that we honor tonight, uh, they're the people that help spread those ideas to other places. So it's a template, but I, 
I also want to suggest in closing that it's worth nothing, this template and this model, without a few other things. And that is the belief, the hope, the passion, and the boundless energy of advocates. So that's what the Bike Awards are also about. So if you're not recognized tonight, I hope you'll remain committed to change for the region and for the idea that we can all drive less and bike and walk and roll and use transit more. Um, and in fact, change, I believe, our politics and our policies to make it all happen. And if you agree with all that, then maybe you can help make the next award winner. Maybe you can be the next award winner. Either way, the years are gonna march on. And so what can we do together over the next decade? What can we celebrate? It's an exciting thought. There's lots of potential. So here's to this year's awards winners. Here's to Hub members, staff, and volunteers who helped make it all happen. And here's to you. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Thanks, Colin, for more reminders of how much the movement has grown. I'm so glad Colin stayed deep within the cycling world after his work with Hub. What a wealth of history Colin has brought together in his book, Van Bikes. I'm learning so much about the early story of cycling advocacy in Vancouver as I read through it. And the story continues. Tonight, we will be recognizing more progress in the movement to mainstream cycling for transportation. We have a lot of improvements to tell you about with many people around the region and province making them possible. Tonight, we are pleased to have Steve Torns MC our event. Steve is a fellow SFU alumnus with a Master in Urban Studies who has an inexhaustible passion for all things related to urban planning, data, politics, and literature. Throughout his studies, he's focused on the ways that transportation collides with space, equity, and everyday mobilities, with these interests culminating in his thesis on the Vancouver Bike Share Program. He now works as the program coordinator for SFU's Van City Office of Community Engagement and hosted the Trip Diary, an original below the radar mini series examining how we move through urban spaces. Over to you, Steve. Hello, and welcome to the 10th annual Hub Bike Awards. Thank you, Aaron and Colin, for those opening messages. My name is Steve Torns, and I will be your MC for tonight's 10th Annual Bike Awards. I hope everyone's settled into their seats and ready to get started. If you register through Eventbrite and stay until the end, you will be entered to win a $50 gift card for Sport Check, a great opportunity to update any cycling kit. Don't worry, you can still register using the link in the chat. Let's share some love to our award winners this evening online using the hashtag Hub Bike Awards in any social media posts. Now, just a few housekeeping rules before we get started. We'd love for you to use the chat to leave comments or ask questions throughout the award ceremony, and the Hub team will do their best to respond to all questions. But also, please remember to be considerate and kind. Moderators are standing by and will remove anyone who is being disruptive to the ceremony. We also have the closed captioning option available through Zoom. In order to enable it, just click the Caption Live Transcript CC button in the meeting controls and select Live Transcription. I'd like to thank the sponsors that made this night possible. Thank you to TransLink, Downtown Van, Lafarge Canada, Richard Buell Sutton LLP, Bunt and Associates, EXP, Eco Counter, ATS Traffic, and Urban Systems. Before we begin, check out this quick video from Downtown Van, a longtime hub cycling supporter and champion of cycling improvements in Downtown Vancouver. Hub Cycling puts on various events each year to show folks that cycling is a safe, fun, and accessible mode of transportation for all ages and abilities. Go by Bike Week 
is the largest annual event and runs twice a year, once in the spring and again in the fall. The program includes celebration stations, community stations, group rides, bike maintenance, workshops, and free webinars about city cycling. Strava was also integrated with the tracking tool last year, allowing folks to upload their rides and making participation easier than ever. Hub also implemented strategies to engage with a wider audience, such as translation event posters to French, Mandarin, Punjabi, Hindi, and Farsi. Last year, over 9,200 participants registered for the event and over 11,000 people stopped by a hub celebration or community station, including over 1,200 of people new to cycling for transportation. Together, participants logged more than 46,000 cycling trips. Tonight, we're going to recognize two organizations that went above and beyond in their dedication towards Go By Bike Week. I'm going to hand it over to two of our event sponsors for the evening to kick things off and present the two Go By Bike Week Awards. Please welcome Michelle Quinn from RBS and Yulia Liam from Bunt & Associates Engineering. It is my pleasure to present the Hub Bike Award for 2022 Go By Bike Week Champion. The award tonight goes to Notch Therapeutics. Notch Therapeutics formed a new team for 2022 with eight new riders in the spring and 19 trips locked. By fall, the team had grown to 12 new riders with 13 out of 16 riders locking 160 trips. It is great to see a company of notch therapeutic size with just under 100 employees fully embrace the Go By Bike Week initiative and inspire their employees to lead a more active and sustainable lifestyle. On behalf of Hub Bike Awards, I would like to extend my congratulations to Notch Therapeutics for their outstanding efforts and for being a true champion of Go By Bike Week. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'm delighted to be here to present the Go By Bike Week Appreciation Award to Simon Fraser University. SFU has shown unwavering commitment to promoting cycling and after transportation on their campuses. They sponsored six celebration stations at last year's Go By Bike Week, rolling out the red carpet at each of their three campuses in Vancouver, Burnaby and Surrey with a great breakfast spread for anyone that stopped by. Thank you for all your continued dedication to promoting a healthy and sustainable lifestyle for your students, staff and faculty. Congratulations to Simon Fraser University. Thank you, Yulia and Michelle. Michelle and her colleagues have championed and supported hub cycling for many years. RBS is a full service law firm serving clients in various areas, including family law, employment and human rights law, litigation, wills and estates, real estate, and business law. Congratulations again to our Go By Bike Week winners. Bike to School Week takes place in the same week as Go by Bike Week Spring and takes place in schools across Metro Vancouver every year. This is a free, fun, week-long celebration for students of all ages and abilities. A whopping 139 Metro Vancouver schools celebrated Bike to School Week. And our school champions got over 24,000 students riding during the week. I will hand it over to Kulvier Mann from the chair of the North Vancouver School District Board of Education, Delta School Board Chair Val Windsor, and Richmond City Councilor Alexa Liu to present the Bike to School Week Awards. Hi everyone, I'm Alexa Liu, City Councilor for the City of Richmond, and I'm here tonight to present an award to the school with the highest number of trips recorded during Bike to School Week. And the winner is, drum roll please! John T. Arrington Elementary in Richmond, way to go! An impressive 170 out of 280 students participated, reporting a total of 1,692 trips. That means an average of five return trips to and from school for each participant. Nice work. This is a fantastic achievement and a testament to the commitment of the students, staff, and parents. Congratulations to John T. Arrington Elementary and your efforts have not only encouraged healthy and environmentally friendly habits,
but have also set an inspiring example for other schools to follow. Over to you, Calvir. Thank you, and congratulations to all the winners so far. The next award goes to a North Vancouver school with the highest number of riders participating in last year's Bike to School Week event. Congratulations to Braemar Elementary School. Braemar Elementary School had an outstanding 92% participation rate in Bike to School Week, an incredible accomplishment demonstrating the school's commitment to promoting healthy and sustainable transportation. I would like to extend congratulations to the staff and parents at Braemar Elementary School for their dedication and hard work to help to reduce traffic congestion and encourage physical activity among students. Once again, congratulations to Braemar Elementary School and thank you to all of the schools that participated in Bike to School Week. Over to you, Val. Thanks, Calvier. I'm thrilled to announce the Bike to School Week Top First Time School Award here in Delta to Cliff Drive Elementary School. For a first time school, it was wonderful to see that over half the students took on the challenge and signed up for Bike to School Week recording a grand total of 589 trips over five days. It's a testament to the power of cycling in bringing our communities together. I would like to thank the parents and staff of Cliff Drive Elementary School for their support and encouragement in providing this opportunity for the students. Once again, congratulations Cliff Drive Elementary School. Keep up the momentum in 2023. Thanks Val. This year, Bike to School Week and Go By Bike Week will take place from May 29th to June 4th. Check out our website for more information and to register today. We have two more awards in the event award categories this evening. The Bike to Shop Champion and Event Volunteer Appreciation Awards. Bike to Shop aims to give you the tools and knowledge to comfortably shop by bike Last year, 11 Metro Vancouver neighborhoods took part and over 1,500 people committed to using their bike to visit local retailers, showing that shopping by bike is easier than you think. Please welcome the Honorable Jugru Bra, Minister of State for Trade, and the Honorable Selena Robinson, MLA for Coquitlam Millardville, and Minister of Post-Secondary Education and Future Skills, who will present the next two awards. I am pleased to present the 2022 Bike to Shop Champion Award. The award tonight goes to Park Royal Shopping Centre. Yes, Park Royal Shopping Centre, a regular supporter of Hub's Bike to Shop event that believes that welcoming bike shoppers is good for business. Situated right on the Spirit Trail, Park Royal goes above and beyond to make it easy for customers to bike to the stores by providing end-of-trip facilities in Park Royal North. These include a North Shore biking map, bike racks, and bike tool kit complete with an air pump. These amenities make it more convenient for customers to bike to the store and encourage more people to choose cycling as a mode of transportation. Congratulations and thank you to Park Royal Shopping Centre for making great efforts to build a bike-friendly community on the North Shore. Over to you, Minister Robinson. Good evening, I'm Selena Robinson the MLA for Coquitlam Millardville. First of all, I want to congratulate all the award winners so far. It is my pleasure to be here with you to recognize and celebrate the contributions of the dedicated volunteers who hub, whom hub cycling events just would not be possible without. And tonight I am thrilled to present the Event Volunteer Appreciation Award to Coquitlam resident, David Burrard. David has been a valued member of the hub community for numerous years, stepping in as a mechanic and volunteer whenever needed. He has been an invaluable presence at celebration stations and knowledge hubs and has made a significant impact on the success of these events. David's dedication and commitment to hub is truly admirable and it is my honor to recognize him for his contributions. David, on behalf of hub and all of our volunteers, I wanna thank you for your hard work and dedication. You keep us rolling and we are so grateful for everything that you do for us. 
and for being a part of our community. Congratulations on winning the Event Volunteer Appreciation Award. And for those of you interested in volunteering, check out the link in the chat if you're interested in volunteering for Hubs events this year. Back to you, Steve. Congratulations to all our award winners so far. Now seems like a good opportunity to mention that Hub Cycling is a member-supported organization. The more members, the more powerful a voice we have to advocate for safer and better cycling across Metro Vancouver. You can join Hub as a lifetime member for just $10. Members come from all walks of life and are united in their shared belief that people on bikes deserve a voice and deserve safe streets regardless of age or ability. If you are part of a business or organization that also values safer cycling for all your employees, clients, and community, Hub offers organizational memberships at various tiers to suit the size and scope of your organization. Please visit the link in the chat to find out more.
Our next award category is the hashtag ungap the map infrastructure improvement awards for larger cycling projects that improve the comfort and safety for people riding while also filling gaps in the cycling network. Presenting these two next awards is Honorable Mike Farnworth, MLA for Port Coquitlam, BC's Deputy Premier and Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General, followed by Katie Fitzmaurice, Vice President, Collaboration at Invest Vancouver. Thank you, Steve. It's my privilege to present the Infrastructure Improvement Award to the City of Port Coquitlam for the Prairie Avenue Multi-Use Pathway. Using funding from TransLink's major road network and bike program, this three meter wide multi-use path on Prairie Avenue between Coast Meridian Road and Fremont is a game changer for the city. It provides Port Coquitlam's first east-west paved and lit crosstown connection and fills a crucial gap in the city's transportation network. The lack of safe ways to cross the city from east to west has long been a concern for residents. Not only does this new infrastructure provide a safer and more convenient route for cyclists and pedestrians, but it is also closer to high quality destinations like shopping districts, making it more, a more appealing option compared to the off-street alternative, the Travel A Trail. The addition of lighting makes it a safer option for nighttime use as well. Congratulations to the City of Port Coquitlam. Hi, it's Mayor Brad West, Mayor of the City of Port Coquitlam and I'm very proud and honored that our city has won the Infrastructure Improvement Award for the Prairie Avenue Multi-Use Pathway as part of Hub Cycling's 10th Annual Bike Awards. When people choose to walk or cycle, they benefit their own health while also contributing to a desirable community with less traffic, livelier streets, and cleaner air. Once again, thank you so much for this award on behalf of everyone at the City of Port Coquitlam. Congratulations to the City of Port Coquitlam for the Prairie Avenue Multi-Use Pathway. The second Infrastructure Improvement Award of the evening goes to the City of Langley for the protected bike lanes on Glover Road. This $2.9 million project, funded in part by TransLink, has transformed the biking experience in Langley. The unidirectional protected lanes on each side of the road go from Langley City boundary to the downtown core, providing protected travel for people cycling. The planter boxes and raised bike lanes effectively separate people on bikes from motor vehicle traffic, ensuring a safer and more enjoyable experience for everyone. The road was also narrowed as part of a road dieting effort to reduce traffic speed and increase comfort for safety and people cycling. The bike lanes pass directly in front of Kwantlen Polytechnic University Langley and near the bus loop and future SkyTrain expansion station on 203 Street, making it a convenient transportation option for students and commuters. Congratulations to the City of Langley for its forward-thinking approach to improving the infrastructure for people on bikes. Hi, I'm Rick Baumhoff, Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment for the City of Langley. It's my privilege to accept this award on behalf of the City uh, for the protected bike infrastructure on Glover Road. And as with many projects, it takes a team of people to make things happen. And just want to acknowledge the, the support of TransLink and their grant program for pr protected bike infrastructure, as well as City Council for their support of this capital project in the city. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all our Infrastructure Improvement Award winners. Next up, we'll hear from TransLink, our transportation heroes, making it possible for thousands of residents throughout Metro Vancouver to choose active and sustainable transportation for their commute. Thank you for supporting Hub Cycling and making multimodal travel across Metro Vancouver. Please welcome Jeffrey Busby, the Vice President of Engineering at TransLink. Good evening, my name is Jeff Busby, Vice President of Engineering for TransLink. I'd like to thank Hub volunteers, staff and board for the work that you do to advance cycling in the region. TransLink is proud of its investments and projects to expand active transportation in line with the region's goal of making walking, cycling, and transit the first choice for mobility. In 2022, we committed more than $30 million in funding towards cycling projects that will result in 30 line kilometers of new or upgraded cycle lanes and 20 line kilometers of new or upgraded multi-use pathways. Amongst these, TransLink funded five rapid implementation cycling projects in five municipalities. These projects use lower cost materials, including planter boxes and flexible bollards to separate cyclists and build out the network more quickly. 
We complemented these grants with the release of the Rapid Implementation Design Guide for Bikeways in Metro Vancouver to assist municipalities with rapid implementation of the bikeway network through case studies and real-world examples. In another first last year, TransLink launched a three-month pilot of bus service between Bridgeport Station and Tawasin Ferry Terminal, retrofitting buses with extra room for bikers to access popular BC Ferries destinations including Victoria, Nanaimo, and the Gulf Islands. In addition to infrastructure, parking, and other transit amenities, TransLink champions a variety of initiatives to promote culture and behavior change through its TravelSmart team. Last year's work included the development of a youth travel strategy, launching TDM for development and employer programs, and making sites more multimodal friendly and travelers more climate conscious. TransLink also supports many of Hub's events and campaigns, including its bike education programs, Go by Bike Week, and Bike to Shop. Another exciting new launch in 2022 was the Transit Friendly Employer Program, acknowledging business leaders who are making employee traveler easy, affordable, and climate friendly by subsidizing the cost of transit. Along with complementary programs like Hub's Bike Friendly Building Assessments, it's all about making walking, cycling, and transit the first choice. Here's a little bit more on the Transit Friendly Employer Program. We've become all too familiar with problems. It's time we're introduced to some solutions. The Transit Friendly Employer Certification exists to support and promote transit use, one of the easiest, most effective actions we can take to address climate action and livability. Organizations that provide a 50% transit subsidy will receive this certification. And while the cost savings alone are meaningful, the action goes much deeper. When faced with crisis, we all feel this responsibility to respond, whether motivated by some organizational mandate or something simpler. This certification represents your opportunity to do just that, and it recognizes those that choose to lead change so that others will follow. Partnering with TransLink, you know, gives us that opportunity to invest in our people and to invest in the planet as well. Whether we're individuals or whether we're businesses, we all play a role in helping to shift towards less carbon intensive modes of transport. I think a program like this absolutely helps us attract and retain people into the organization because it's just another benefit. Having efficient, affordable transit while doing the right thing for the planet just makes sense. The time to act is now. Become a transit-friendly employer today. Next up, we'll hear from Hub Cycling's Chelsea Cran and TransLink's Jeffrey Busby to introduce the winners of this year's Bike Friendly Building Awards. The choice to cycle for transportation is highly influenced by having somewhere safe and practical to leave your bicycle and potentially shower, change, and store gear. Hub's Bike Friendly Building Assessments include scores and recommendations about all elements of building design, equipment, and policies. In 2022, the team produced reports for two office buildings, three residential towers, a department store redevelopment, a fire hall, and two hospitals. Hub's Bike Friendly Building team is pleased to engage with TransLink's Transit Friendly Employer Program to cross promote our respective services. They really complement one another. Clients implementing Hub's recommendations can better attract and attain tenants, reduce motor vehicle reliance, and the need for car parking spaces, in addition to helping meet and exceed municipal requirements and gain the marketing advantage of having Hub Cycling's Bike Friendly Building certification. Congratulations to Vancouver Coastal Health and the Provincial Health Services Authority for your Bike Friendly Building Award. I'll pass the mic to TransLink's Jeffrey Busby to tell us more. Vancouver's health authorities continue to commit to using cycling to develop healthier communities. With more people using bikes, fewer drivers and healthier staff, focusing on active transportation can be a model for change with our communities. They are a key example of this model at work. BC hospitals are the key to maintaining health and well-being of individuals in Metro Vancouver and beyond. Cycling plays an integral role in the lives of people working in and visiting BC hospital facilities. In 2022, Hub Cycling assessed Vancouver General Hospital and BC Children's and Women's Hospital. VGH's award-winning cycling center is equipped with change rooms, laundry services, repair spaces, and educational workshops leading the hospitals in cycling innovation. BC Children's and Women's has multiple bike rooms and a significant visitor bike parking at all entrances. Both VGH and Children's and Women's were assessed at a silver bike-friendly building certification level. These award-winning assessments follow previous BFB assessments for Burnaby Hospital and the new St. Paul Hospital, where Providence and Fraser Health are making strides towards cycling-friendly communities. 
And the final Bike Friendly Building Award goes to Hudson Bay Company for their Bike Friendly Building Certification. Back to you, Jeff. The historical and iconic Hudson Bay Company flagship store is poised for redevelopment with active transportation and sustainable mobility at the heart of its vision. The development plans prioritize sustainability through improved cycling infrastructure and multimodal transportation. Streetworks Developments, HBC's development arm, has engaged Hub during the project planning phases. Hub is working with Perkins & Will Architects to assess and analyze short and long-term parking solutions, desire lines for community cycling connections, and internal access and egress for cyclists, including using innovative bicycle escalator technologies. This transit hub will benefit future office employees who need secure long-term parking options with state-of-the-art end-of-the-trip amenities and visitors who need to make a quick stop to the bay before continuing their commute. The Bay is raising the bar for other office and retail buildings by creatively reimagining cycling in the downtown core. In 2022, over 15,000 elementary students throughout British Columbia participated in a hub cycling bike to school course, reporting increases in cycling skill, confidence, and actual riding to school as a result of the course. Hub Cycling is pleased to offer these fully funded elementary school courses to over 150 schools across Metro Vancouver in 2023. In addition, Hub Cycling has free online resources and opportunities for educators, families, youth, and adults. Hub is currently seeking part-time and full-time instructors to join the team in March to provide cycling education to more people. Please visit the link in the chat for more information. Next, I'd like to pass it over to Ashley Bangsund from the Vancouver School District and Bill Brassington, Chair of the Burnaby Board of Education, to present these next two awards. Hi, I'm Ashley and I work for the Vancouver School Board Sustainability Team and I'm delighted to present the next Hub Bike Award for 2022 Cycling Education Champion to the City of Vancouver for outstanding efforts in expanding cycling education. Last year, the City of Vancouver expanded bike education programs from 6 to 37 schools and provided funding for all grades 6 and 7 students to participate. This not only encourages more students to bike to school, but also provides them with the necessary knowledge to do so safely. Additionally, they helped fund the launch of the Streetwise Cycling Education Centre at Trout Lake, which serves as a hub for cycling education and resources for all members of the community. On behalf of Hub Cycling, I would like to extend warm congratulations to the City of Vancouver for their outstanding contributions and positive impact on cycling in our community. Hi, I'm Alicia Burak. And I'm Chloe Lynn. And we're here from the Community Transportation Branch at the City of Vancouver. We are so grateful to accept this Cycling Education Champion Award on behalf of the city this year. We're proud of everything we've accomplished together, from supporting newcomers to Canada to gain these skills and confidence to cycle in their new homes to providing universal cycling education for grade six and seven students in our public elementary schools. 
Thank you, Hub, for your passionate expertise that you bring to your educational programs that have positively impacted thousands of Vancouverites each year. We look forward to our continued partnership to get more people riding more often in the city of Vancouver. Congratulations to the award winners so far. I'm pleased to present the Hub Bike Awards for School Cycling Advocates. The award tonight goes to the dedicated staff team at Ecole Mosscrop Secondary. The team, led by their captain Patrick, has shown their commitment year over year to promoting cycling as a healthy and sustainable mode of transportation. From their humble beginnings with just two or three participants, the school team has grown to more than 100 members. This group, including teachers, education assistants and administrators, has set a high bar for all schools of what can be achieved. Their efforts have been on the radar for some time. Mosscrop has consistently been at or near the top among schools for the highest number of participants and total distance during Go By Bike Week. As a school district, we're proud to have a sustainability strategic plan. However, plans are just words on a page without people to bring them to life. This is one shining example of many from across the Burnaby School District of individuals working together for the strength and well-being of people and the planet. On behalf of the Burnaby Board of Education, I want to express my pride and thanks to the team and their dedication in promoting sustainable and healthy transport, reducing their ecological footprints, and for leading by example as role models for students and the wider community. What you do matters. So on behalf of Hub Cycling and the Burnaby Board of Education, I extend heartfelt congratulations to Akel Musgrop Secondary staff team for their achievements and continued efforts. Thank you. We are a Mosscrop Go By Bike team, and on behalf of the entire staff, we would like to thank Hub for um, the School Cycling Advocate Awards. Um, we are very grateful to be part of that initiative. Um, a big shout out to the leader of our school, Patrick Parks, in terms of Go By Bike team. And, and also, we would like to have more schools participate in that great endeavor and that great initiative. Um, it keeps us healthy, it's good for the planet, and we hope to have a lot of fierce competition because we are a small school. So bring it on anyone that wants to take that award next year because we're coming back again. So thank you very much. Congratulations to our school cycling advocates, the City of Vancouver, and a dedicated staff team at Muscrop Secondary School. Next up, we'll hear from one of our event sponsors, Lafarge Canada. Lafarge Canada is a longtime supporter of Hub Cycling and Canada's largest provider of sustainable construction materials. Check out this short video. We build the world around us. A growing world that keeps people safe and connected. Building societies, creating communities. But we have a bigger role to play. And that's why we are reinventing how the world builds. A world that is made greener, made smarter, made for all. A world that is circular, a future that is net zero, making more with less, creating progress for everyone. We understand the challenges and we are rising to meet them because with our heads, our hands and our hearts, we build. We will find new answers and push ourselves to realize them because we know the future isn't written, it's built. Thank you, Lafarge Canada. Next up are our Advocacy Volunteer Awards. Volunteers are the center of Hub's work. Local committee volunteers work tirelessly advocating for safer and more connected cycling all across Metro Vancouver. They are involved in a wide range of activities, including advocating to local decision makers, writing letters, evaluating cycling facilities, organizing and assisting with events, and building capacity within local committees. This award is our chance to celebrate some of the amazing work of our volunteers and thank them for everything they do. Please welcome North Vancouver City Councillor Tony Valente and Maple Ridge City Councillor Jenny Tan in presenting the following awards. I wanted to start by saying good evening and congratulations to all the Hub Award winners who've uh, received their awards tonight. It's really exciting. 
Um, and tonight, it's my great pleasure to present the Hub Cycling uh, Local Committee Volunteer Appreciation Award to Heather Druget. She's been active as a founding member of the Hub North Shore Committee uh, and a true champion of transportation, active transportation in our community. Heather's dedication to making our streets safer and more accessible for cyclists is really truly inspiring. It's been since 2008 that she's liaised with the District of West Vancouver, the City of North Vancouver, and she's been an invaluable member to the Communications Subcommittee at Hub Headquarters. She also has a column in the North Shore News, uh, which has been a regular feature for more than a decade, a very valuable resource to the community, providing insights on everything from safe bike lanes to self-driving cars, and if you'll permit, I think she's really driven transportation thought in the North Shore as a region. Heather's activism, though, also extends beyond Hub. She's supported council and mayoral candidates in favor of building high-quality micro-mobility infrastructure. I know a few of them. She regularly speaks at council meetings and with the press to, to advance the North Shore's evolving cycling network. Her voice has been an important one in shaping our community's transportation landscape, and we're truly grateful for her contributions. And I'm certainly personally grateful for her contributions and very happy to see her uh, winning this award tonight. So please join me in congratulating Heather on winning the Volunteer Appreciation Award. Hi, I'm Jenny Tan, Councillor for the City of Maple Ridge. I'm proud and pleased to present the next Volunteer Appreciation Award to Jackie Chow. Jackie, congratulations and thank you so much for your work. Over the past 10 years, Jackie has been a key force of the Maple Ridge Pit Meadows Committee, serving both as a member and also as a co-chair. Her willingness to work with city staff, her advocacy to mayor and council, and her ability to reach new people in new ways have been instrumental in driving cycling forward in Maple Ridge. Jackie's tireless advocacy is something I deeply admire and something I see so regularly. Even during challenging times, when hope seems hard to come by, Jackie has been a source of inspiration. Congratulations, Jackie. Thank you so much for your work and for being a beacon of hope. Congratulations to our Advocacy Volunteer Award recipients. If you are interested in making a difference in your community, you can join these fine folks in the Hub Local Committee in your area. The groups are entirely made up of passionate volunteers who want to make biking safer and better in their communities. We're always looking for new members and fresh perspectives. No experience required and all are welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce the next award presenter. Please welcome the Honorable Rob Fleming, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure to present the biggest LEAP Award. Hub Cycling's biggest LEAP awards are given to an organization that shows the greatest step forward to get more people cycling through policy and infrastructure cha changes. Congratulations to this year's winner, the City of Burnaby. The City of Burnaby is in the middle of an important transformation. By adopting a people-first transportation plan in December 2021, Burnaby has taken a bold step towards sustainable and active modes of transportation. The plan won the ITE Outstanding Technical Project Award, and its six ambitious goals and three measurable citywide targets empower citizens to shift towards more sustainable travel behaviors. I would like to commend the Burnaby staff for working on cycling initiatives and the City Council for their focus on active and sustainable transportation. The expedited and enhanced cycling network, including safe routes to school, improved connectivity and fixing gaps in the network, is a clear testament to this commitment. Hello everyone, Mayor Mike Hurley here. Today I'm honoured to accept the Greatest Sleep Award from Hub Cycling on behalf of the City of Burnaby. This award is presented annually to an organisation that has made substantial changes to help get more people on bikes. We're extremely proud to be recognised for our efforts to improve cycling infrastructure across Burnaby over the last few years. Our goal is to make it easy for anyone from beginners to experienced cyclists to get on a bike and head out and explore our wonderful community. And we know there's still a lot of work to do and we're going to reach even further in the next few years as we continue to build essential infrastructure all across Burnaby. Thank you to Hub for recognizing us with this award and thank you to the entire Burnaby community for supporting our transportation initiatives. 
Thank you, Minister Fleming, and congratulations to the city of Burnaby. Hub Cycling's mission to get more people cycling more often is only realized through the support of the wider cycling community. That helps us create public support for cycling improvements across Metro Vancouver. In recognition of that community, we are proud to announce our next award category, the People's Choice Award. The People's Choice Award is decided by the community for the community. Anyone can nominate an individual, bike shop, business, or organization that spearheaded achievements in cycling over 2022. I am pleased to welcome Christine Boyle, Vancouver City Councillor, to present the winners of this year's People's Choice Award. Hello, my name is Christine Boyle. I'm a city councillor in Vancouver, and I am delighted to present two of this year's Hub People's Choice Awards. The winner of the People's Choice Bike Shop of the Year Award is Our Community Bikes in Vancouver. Our Community Bikes is more than just a bike shop. They are a vital part of the community, providing opportunities for employment, hands-on mechanic training, and access to bike parts and services for those who may not have the means to afford them. Their dedication to giving back to the community is truly admirable. In 2022, they distributed over 150 bikes to people facing financial hardship, removed hundreds of bikes from the waste stream, and repurposed parts for the community to use. They also engaged over 70 community members in mechanic training, providing them with valuable skills and experience. I will say personally, I have uh, done workshops at OCB and, and brought my bike there. I had amazing experience over uh, many, many years with their staff uh, and the community that, we, that they create. I'm so grateful uh, that they exist and for all the work that they do and to get to honor them with this People's Choice Award. Congratulations to our community bikes. The next People's Choice Award for Individual of the Year goes to Tyrone Siglos. Tyrone has dedicated himself to promoting an inclusive and supportive environment for all riders. An enthusiastic bike community cheerleader, he encourages everyone to ride bikes in ways that feel good to them. Last year, Tyrone dedicated time and energy to several community efforts, using his platform to increase awareness about women's cycling at Tour de Concorde and the need for inclusive spaces in the industry. He raised $2,500 for the UBC Bike Kitchen, one of the few bike shops in the city with trans and female mechanics. In addition, he hosted his own bike events, Tyrone's Tours, and Riley's Rips showcasing the very best of Vancouver on two wheels. Uh, I got to, to meet and interact with Tyrone a bit around the push for a bike lane on Broadway um, and uh, have crossed paths biking around the city. Again, so thrilled to get to award this People's Choice Award for Individual of the Year to Tyrone. Congratulations. Thank you for everything you do. Um, hi, my name is Anna, and I'm one of the chairs of the Hub Cycling Richmond YVR Local Committee, and I'm delighted to announce the final winner in the People's Choice category for business or organization. The award tonight goes to Sanctuary Cafe in Richmond, a cafe that has truly earned the title of a cyclist sanctuary. Throughout the challenging times of COVID-19, Sanctuary Cafe remained open, providing a haven for cyclists and community members alike. Friendly staff, pop-up shops, and an active bike club make it a hub for the local cycling community. And it's not just the bike offerings that make Sanctuary Cafe stand out. The coffee and food are delicious, making it a perfect stop to refuel and rest before continuing your ride. Congratulations to Sanctuary Cafe. Our final word of the evening is the Arnold Shorting House Cycling Champion of the Year Award. This annual award is presented to an individual or an organization that made a huge and lasting impact on cycling in our region. Arnold Shorting House was an institution in cycling advocacy and worked tirelessly for many years to improve cycling conditions within hub cycling BC Cycling Coalition, 
and Canada bikes, among many other worthy causes. His generosity of heart, combined with his tenacity, made him a unique advocate who has left a distinct mark on safer and more accessible cycling. He traveled the world on two wheels, coming back with new ideas for local improvements, and gave so much of his time to see those improvements take place here. Many of you knew Arnold personally. His reach extended far, and having spent countless hours working in this community. In 2019, Hub Cycling instituted an achievement award after Arnold Shorting House, memorializing his lifetime of dedication to improving cycling conditions and bettering people's lives. To present the 2022 Arnold Shorting House Cycling Champion of the Year Award, please welcome back last year's recipient of the award, Minister Bowen Ma. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm pleased to announce the recipient of the Arno Shorting House Cycling Champion Award, Mia Kohout. Mia has been instrumental in advancing the local cycling community. She first founded Metro Vancouver Bike to Work Week in 2007, which drew a thousand participants in its first year. It's now known as Go By Bike Week, by the way. Afterwards, under her leadership, she expanded Momentum Magazine into the North American market and brought the Vancouver-based publication into the mainstream. She was later named one of the most influential women in the North American bike industry by Bicycle Retailer. Mia is known for her advocacy around protected cycling infrastructure and bike sharing programs to make cycling more accessible and appealing to a broader range of people. She earned the first female general manager position of Moby Bikes, where she has successfully led the public bike sharing program through its launch and several expansions, including the integration of e-bikes into the fleet in 2022. What a fantastic way to make cycling more inclusive to people of different mobilities, uh, abilities, and make those hills feel a heck of a lot flatter. Mia has demonstrated a passion for getting more people on bikes throughout her career, significantly impacting Metro Vancouver's cycling scene as we know it today. Please join me in congratulating Mia Kohout, the 2023 Arno Shorting House Cycling Champion. Thank you so much for this award. It really means a lot, especially to receive it in Arno's name. I first met Arno in 2007 when we were getting Bike to Work Week started, and he was always so supportive and encouraging, so this truly does mean a lot. It's an honor. One exciting thing that we've done at Movie this year is we've given all of our staff lifetime memberships to Hub. This is one way that we can support Hub and ensure that they have the support they need to continue to doing the good work they're doing and making sure we have the infrastructure we need to all bike around safely. So I certainly encourage you to do the same at your workplace. Thanks again. All good things must come to an end. And with that, please join me one more time in congratulating all the award winners for the 10th annual Hub Bike Awards. Let me thank you all for your service to the community. When I'm using protected bike lanes, traffic controlled intersections, and witnessing kids and seniors on two wheels, I know these things don't just happen. Cycling is safe for all ages and abilities only because of the dedication of people like you. I like to repeat a huge thanks to our sponsors for making this night possible. Thank you to Translink, Downtown Van, Lafarge Canada, Richards Buell Sutton LLP, Bunt and Associates, EXP, Eco Counter, ATS Traffic, and Urban Systems for all you do to promote and encourage cycling. Thanks, Steve, and well-deserved, Mia. Thank you for your efforts to make cycling safer and more accessible, and ultimately to make our province a better place because of it. Your longtime commitment to cycling and personally using a bike to get around for decades is a big asset as you work towards a resilient, equitable, and vibrant future for British Columbians. Another year of well-deserving winners. Thank you all for joining us tonight to celebrate Cycling for Transportation. Congratulations to all our award winners and those who encouraged and supported them to make positive changes. A big thanks to our MC, Steve Torns, and the Hub Cycling event team, especially Lisa, Marcella, Rihanna, and Kate, who pulled this event together. And thank you all for attending tonight. We look forward to seeing you all out at upcoming events like Go By Bike Week and Bike to School Week, and online before then with our webinars and Streetwise Cycling online courses, available for free.
Have a great evening, everyone, and ride on.